House of the Dragon, season two, episode three, The Burning Mill. <laughs> Yo, what's up, guys? Uh, here we go, man. We're starting. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, like always. Like, comment, subscribe. We are on Patreon, if you guys didn't know. I know we plug it, like, constantly, but it really helps. So, uh, yeah, you guys can come join over there. We got a lot of other stuff, too, like uh, The Truman Show, Castaway, just all kinds of stuff, man. Why'd you name this? Yo, it's blood this time. Oh, yeah. It's about to get bloody up in here. Let's go. It used to be the sand was just moving. No, I thought it was, like, some gold threads. Maybe right. I was like the Shire. Oh, must be my swordsmanship. <laughs> <laughs> Can you even get that thing up? Well enough for killing Blackwoods. <laughs> Put the boundary stones back. We didn't move them. Uh -oh. Did they move themselves then? Just rolled their way over so Bracken cows can fill their bellies on Blackwood grass. The Assize at River. The Assize. Like some gangs or something? This is our land. It's Bracken land. Babe killer. What did you say? Uh-oh. Ooh. Your false queen, Rhaenyra, is a kinslayer. <gasps> How dare you? Your uncle declared for Aegon, did he? Well then, let me tell you, Aegon Targaryen is no true king, just as you are no true knight. You're both craven. Listen. Oh. <laughs> you wouldn't dare. Maybe he would. I know. <laughs> I don't even know him. <gasps> oh. Holy. That's a lot of dead people. Maybe Holy. they did get enough. So, so you maybe killed him and that started a war? Or a battle? Maybe they're like always a battle because I, I think I've seen them fighting before in a previous episode. Basis. Those two houses? Yeah. Hold on. He's so, he's... Those weren't those how them little kids who was fighting over yeah, near, yeah, was it? it honestly, it looked like at first I thought it was the I thought, it was I thought it was the Baratheon sigil, but it wasn't. And I remember there was like called like a Blackwood or Black Fire. That was that little boy or something? Yeah, it was a little boy and that big kid. I understand. That, that like chunky kid. So they don't like each other. Yeah. Here's the basest of villains. He sullies the grave of his brother. I can't That's some good acting in it. Keeping his oath. I don't like. What of those who sent him? Otto Hightower would never have allowed this. Hotter blood has prevailed. The young men have taken the bit in their teeth they wish to punish, to avenge. Soon they will not even remember what it was that began the war in the fight. That is easy enough. They usurped my throne. That is one answer. Or was it when the child was beheaded? Yeah. Or when Eamon killed Luke? A lot of bloodshed already. Or when Luke took Eamon's eye. We teeter now at the point where none of it will matter. When the desire to kill and burn takes hold and reason is forgotten. There may be another way. Alicent Hightower. It kind of started when I sent her in the Alicent room. Said yeah. I would make a fine queen. You've seen what has happened since then. She came to me in the hours after your Lord Father's death. She knows war is coming and that it'll be savage beyond all compare. There is no war so hateful to the gods as a war between kin. And no war so bloody as a war between dragons. I do not believe Yikes. she wants it. She sent a raven. I do not care to read her message. You need to read it. She's waiting what on you. What she did is not her, but the men around her who seek bloodshed. She permitted it. As you permitted the murder of a little boy in his bed. Right. Y'all boy is crazy. Y'all boy is wildin'. Alicent is in King's Landing. Her son sits my throne. There is nothing more to be said. Nah, you saw that? Them dudes was the victims of y'all. Yeah, they're not even Targaryen at all. Nah, I'm talking about y'all. Oh. <laughs> You're well, Lord Hand. They got him all messed up. He was zoned out. What the hell? Only they'll be waiting. Look at that necklace. I know, it's like this. That dude's tough. That's cool. Boo. Nobody likes the green ones. 
It's like getting a green Skittle. But. <laughs> oh, slacking. <laughs> He was sitting, he was sitting on the stairs. Don't we see Aegon hanging out with his white cloaks? Whatever they're called. The Remember boys? right before they killed his son, he was drinking with them? Yeah, but they weren't knights. I didn't think. I thought they were just Mario some random Grace, people. <laughs> my lord. Oh, there's the name. Forgive my lateness. Important business, no doubt. You've appointed new knights to the King's Guard, Your Grace. To replace those we lost. The last one needlessly, some might say. Sir Arik was awarded the great duty of ending Rhaenyra's challenge. He failed to discharge it. He failed because the scheme was rash. Perhaps, Your Grace, but we cannot all hide in our castles waiting for war to come to us. As now it surely will. As now it already has. House Bracken took it upon themselves to attack the Blackwoods, who declared for the Pretender. Lord Samuel Blackwood himself is slain. Good. First blood in our name. Both sides took heavy losses, Your Grace. I'm not entirely certain we can declare this a victory. The Blackwoods and the Brackens have feuded for centuries. This is nothing more than an excuse for them to indulge their ancient grudge. It's no true war. Call it what you will. I call it war. And so will Dragonstone. The question is, what are we going to do about it? We send a raven to Lord Tully. These houses are his vassals, are they not? He must control them. Lord Grover Tully is a flaccid old fool who can control his cock and a cunny. Beg his pardon, your grace. What's a cunny? I don't know. Your lord Uncle Ormond marches from Old Town at the head of a great host, your grace. And your brother Darren's dragon near his fighting age call on them to suppress the Riverlands. Now, last they are months away. My lord brother Jason is raising a great army at Castle Rock. In a matter of weeks, he will be able to harass the Blackwoods from the West. Should we not aim to unite these armies and then strike <laughs> as one? Ah, the great military mind of the Citadel. Do I remind me each link in your chain to denotes the art of war. This council must rediscover the discipline it lately had if it's to be of any use. The Riverlands are the key to the war. Yeah, this council's falling off. Yeah, y'all talking crazy. I will ride out with those I can muster here. Men I know, men are trained. You need time to raise the numbers to challenge the Rivermen. Speed is my ally. I will turn the Crown land houses who declared for Rhaenyra to our cause. We will add their numbers to our own and then turn west, where I will enlist the Bracken, subdue the Riverlands, and take Harrenhal. Hey, so Harrenhal. So you to ride with so few men. So like to be destroyed by the first stronghold you meet. A bold scheme indeed. Well, the gods favor the bold. They did not favor Sir Eric. Mm -hmm. What say you, my king? Disrespectful. And take Aemond and Vagar. <laughs> Vagar will remain here to defend the city. Good. To war, then. <laughs> so cash. I'll come too with Sunfire. Egon. Your grace. You'll need a dragon. My plan is not to draw attention. And, and what will you do if you encounter one or more of Rhaenyra's dragons? That She'll defeats the whole purpose. <laughs> we will be more like to encounter one if we field one of our own. That is precisely why you must remain, brother. It's a brave thought, but we cannot risk your loss. I'm as fearsome as any of them. <laughs> Just say okay, just tell me how. <laughs> that man's ego. He's like, he's like, I just want to, I just want you to tell me no, I can't go, okay? <laughs> I was told you turned back from your ship to bring warning. I was not believed at first. You saved my life. What is the life of a queen worth these days? <laughs> you wish to be rewarded. As I would think, you would wish to reward me. <laughs> <laughs> what price would you set? A place at your court. Wow. Oh. I thought you were gonna ask for like a dragon egg. You said your earnest desire was to flee Westeros. That's expensive. Let me go. Yeah. You showed me grace when you could have withheld it. I'm not often surprised. Well, okay, here's a few shillings. <laughs> One turn for another then. I know the workings of the Red Keep and the movements of those who serve there. Cha ching, we need her. That is worth more than gold, do you know? And what is my worth to you? I would punish the high towers for to me to those who served me. But more than that, I know the struggles of the small folk of King's Landing. They will be ruled either by you or by the usurper. And only one of you has shown yourself to be merciful. Oh. Well, I hope you do not confuse mercy with pliancy. Oh yeah, because she wants those kid fight pits them? gone. Mm -hmm. Sea Smoke, my late Lord Husband's dragon, has grown restless of late. We cannot know why. Maybe he's lonely. Pretty obvious thought, right? Or hungry. Raina. Your Grace. I've decided to send Joffrey to ward with my cousin, Lady Jane Arryn. 
She has pledged an army in return for a dragon, so she will have one. Aegon and Viserys will accompany him until a place of greater safety can be found. Tyraxes is but a hatchling and Stormcloud. I want you to go with them. The Red Keep is in disarray. They have sent one assassin in the night and their dragons are ever a short flight away. You must take the little ones further. To Pentos, I think. Oh, wow. When my mother died. It is safer than anywhere in Westeros. Write to Prince Reggio if he will have you, then go to him. I am sorry to put this upon you. It breaks my heart to send my boys away, not knowing when I will see them again. But you have seen what may befall them here. Raina, I need you to be the mother to them that I cannot. Aww. There's a lot of pressure on her. Guard them as a dragon guards her eggs. And my sister? I need Bailey here. Because she has a dragon. I can't right. promise to make you happy, but I ask you, make this sacrifice willingly for all of us. That's a tough sacrifice. Well, she's basically like, you'll be safe. <laughs> right, she's basically you're gonna be at the babysitter. But, <laughs> but she's sick of it though, yeah. But she, she feels less than because she don't have a dragon. Oh yeah, people like just recently died in there, right? Yeah, that fire just happened. Well, not like recently, but it was kind Relatively of recently. Relatively yeah. recently. It's giving haunted house vibes. <laughs> Definitely right there. Mm-hmm. Well, like after a while, I've learned to love that castle though. It definitely has character. Look at that face. Dang, you hear like voices, right? So it's crazy, like people have constantly said Heron Hall's a scary place, it's cursed and la la la, and we're finally actually like getting to see it other than just like someone burning it or like rats eating people's stomachs. Right. Sorry guys, if y'all don't know, we're babysitting her parents' dogs, two of them. So we have five dogs. <laughs> and it's also 4th of July soon, so people are already outside shooting sparklers oh. and stuff. Damn, Damon. Oh. I'm claiming Aaron Hall. <laughs> Apparently so. <laughs> Lord Damon. He didn't fight for it, did he? Well, not yet. Anyone who wants that rat's nest can come take it, huh? Mm-hmm. Samuel. <laughs> oh. I, Sir Simon Strong, Castellan of Aaron Hall. Oh, Strong. Pledge fealty to Rhaenyra of House Targaryen, first of her name. I swear this by the old gods and the new. Supper is venison with black cabbage and peas. <laughs> the red currant. Sorry about that. This is a good welcome if you're Damon. Well, that was easy. <laughs> Didn't even have to fight one guy. That venison is well aged. Shame to let it waste. <laughs> I've survived many a battle. I do not mean to be felled by poison peas. <laughs> <laughs> I'll admit that my cook's peas aren't exactly the stuff of legend, but poison? Well, it's an easy way to kill a dragon rider. If you've not yet surmised, you are welcome here. And what of your lord? Laris Strong. Hmm? He who sits at the false court of Egon. Laris Clubfoot is no lord of mine. Mine either. <laughs> He's a scourge upon this castle and this family. Do you not think it's strange that his father, my nephew, Lord Lionel, perished by fire, and his son too, here in this damp place? Oh. It was the first fire here since Balerion ended the line of Harrow and the Black. Even in summer, we struggled to light the hearths. So, so a long no, time you will ago. find no loyalty yeah. to Laris Strong here, my prince. Your Grace. Ooh. Forgive me, I, I, um, I'd only assumed that as consul. And we are reminded of the perilousness of assumption. Indeed. Ah, uh, Damon. Your Grace. What then brings you to our 
corner of the Riverlands. Harrenhal is the largest castle in the Seven Kingdoms. Or perhaps that has escaped your attention. Well, it is also, not to be argumentative, in something of a state of disrepair. Right. Since your forebear incinerated much of it with his dragon. Well, that is precisely why we must bring it into a state of repair. Even if we possess the coin, my prince. No way, Oh, your, your grace. To what possible end? There are 40,000 swords in the Riverlands, the largest undeclared host in the realm. Only Harrenhal is of a size enough to garrison them. You should know that a substantial number of those swords have now declared and are presently at war. Houses Bracken and Blackwood have long detested one another. Why? Oh, well, the answer to that is lost in time. Sin begets sin. So that's been going on forever. It's a cycle of madness. Summon your Lord Paramount so that I may treat with him myself and turn them to our cause. That would be Lord Grover Tully, but he grows frail. It's said that he can no longer speak, nor seal his bowels. Ugh. Begging your pardon for the impression. His grip on his bannerman is weak. They feel they can do as they please. I will speak with him nonetheless. People should obey their liege lord, whatever his condition. Perhaps the presence of the crown and a dragon will sharpen minds round these parts. <laughs> Might I ask, Your Grace, if you are successful? Well, when you are successful. He's got a slippery tongue, don't he? <laughs> he slipped a bunch. march on King's Landing and take the throne. The throne? It's a big chair made of swords. Thousands. You can't get comfortable on it. You know, it's crazy because we just watched Pulp Fiction. Apparently, Quentin Tarantino has a foot fetish. So when I see Laris, I'm going to start calling him Tarantino. <laughs> Larantino. <laughs> Laratino. <laughs> Your host is mustered and ready to march. He enjoys that. Christian got that arching cut, don't he? <laughs> what? Look at that thing. thing arches up. So, Kristen. May Look at his unicorn. Sir Gwen Hightower arrived last night from Altam. So, Kristen. Mayhaps, I should say. My Lord Han. Sir Gwen, welcome to King's Landing. How exhilarating to arrive at court after three long months on the road to find my Lord Father, who served three kings faithfully, unseated as Hand of the King. And by a man from such modest beginnings. Hold out, kind of guy. Being sent. The gods have bestowed on you. <laughs> Sir Gawain has volunteered to accompany you into battle. That's not who you want, though. We have a full compliment, Your Grace. Then you shall have a fuller one. The march will be hard, sir. No one is more delighted than I to march out to war with the Dornishman. Sister. <laughs> Spy vibes. I don't know. <laughs> May the Seven guide you. Good night. And lead you not into shadow and death. I thank your grace for her prayers. So formal. And request that she grant her favor, that her lord commander may go into battle with her blessing in his heart. The, re the reverse card. Your grace. <laughs> I would like seven blessings to you by. I guess he ain't doing something right. Well, he's being awfully disrespectful since he got handed the king, right? Mm -hmm. You think she still allows him to her chambers? I think he just lives in her chambers. Dang, we'll just leave those there for decoration. Damn, there goes Bran. <laughs> Bran's like... <laughs> Didn't Bran tell a story about someone with rats or something like that before? Yes, he did. I just don't remember it at all. No men, no horses, no ships, no dragons. Good. Then we must seize the hour and act before our enemy does. They have penetrated our castle walls, and now the Riverlands are aflame after the Battle of the Burning Mill. How fares Prince Damon with our army? There has been no word from Prince Damon, Your Grace. Then we must press what advantage we do have. And what is that? Dragons. Send them all out. Start turning green strongholds to our cause. And burn those who resist. No. Man, that's tyrannical. If dragons <laughs> begin fighting dragons, we invite our own destruction. Fear of it is in itself a weapon. The Greens will make the same calculation. <laughs> the value of a sword is not within its scabbard. You're like a naive woman. We will you gotta use secure force. victory with armies, not with dragons alone. The Greens understand that. The Vale and the North will send men. We must give Damon time. Uh, Your Grace, you have witnessed firsthand just how vulnerable you are. Prince Damon is abroad, and Egan's factions are enraged at the death of his son. You have never been so exposed. Perhaps it is time for you to think about secreting yourself somewhere safe. 
while we remain here as a source of distraction for the enemy. No, I'm just trying to boot her out. I know. The war in my it, it would merely be a precaution. It would be treason. You are fortunate you took it no further. Tell him, Rhaenyra. This council would do well to remember that their queen wears the crown of my grandsire, Jaehaerys the Conciliator, a prudent ruler, the wisest of Targaryen kings whose reign outlasted every other, even Aegon the Conqueror's. That's Damn. right. Damn. She said y'all dudes need to chill out. Give them some Targaryen facts and head so out. So how do they fare, the ditherers of Dragonstone? Rhaenyra's council is wayward. She has a hard task. I must hope she will rise to it. But I fear she'll need you by her side sooner than late. Bread, still warm. There's broth too, I made sure of it. I am no longer an invalid. Aw. I bade farewell to Raina before I returned. I wish her well. I would fight a hundred battles before I went into exile with none but prattling babes. <laughs> <laughs> One of those babes is your heir. Joffrey. A boy of six who knows nothing of the sea. And yet somehow... It would displease neither Rhaenyra nor the gods. Rhaena were named heir to Driftmark. Rhaena, Lord of the Tides. The girl knows nothing of ships, nor even of dragons. There is Rhaena or there is Joffrey, both soon to be far from the creak of ships and the ocean's roar. Then we must hope to see our way forward in time. And if there is no time, we are at war, Corlys. If something were to befall you. Then... It is well that I am a good sailor. They sailed away, right? When mm -hmm. the doom happened and the other ones flew away. I have much to attend to. That might be useful one day. And they got out first, right? Yeah. And the Targaryens stayed behind longer because they was too caught up trying to control the dragons. Well, the, the Targaryens flew away because they saw a vision. Someone had a vision. I cannot spare a fighting dragon. But I say what I can. Stormcloud and Tyraxes are small, but they will grow. It is for you to remind Lady Jane of her pledge and persuade her of the urgency of our need. Earlier they mentioned that the dragons were almost a fighting age. Go Crazy. safely, mm -hmm. sister. I will be safe enough, far away from any danger with only babes to nurse me. You do a great service and may yet find yourself glad to be out of harm's way. Do not coddle me, Bela. Grant me at least that dignity. I meant no insult. We each do what we can. And here, I think, is some consolation. Tyraxes and Stormcloud are young and vulnerable. These eggs are even more fragile. But should all come to ruin here, you will bear our hope for the future. So she's like Matt Damon on Interstellar. Basically, yeah. They need her. Just in case. That's an important job. Yeah, they're trusting her with everybody. Mm-hmm. That's so sad that she knows she has to go to war and she's not even going to get to take care of him. I know those years are really important too. Mm-hmm. Aww. They're going to be okay though because that whole family's tough as hell. Mm -hmm. Hopefully she gets a dragon at some point. I really hope she does. Right, right. There's still some dragons out there. Mm-hmm. I feel sad about Jaehaerys, but I ought not to, I think. People die all the time, especially babes. Not like that. They're so little, so they're taken so easily. Sadness is a condition of motherhood. There's not to be gained from it. That horrid procession where the small folk all stirred. I warrant they thought I had no more right to grief than they do. Surely they lose their babes more than highborn ladies. The stranger comes for us all, queen and commoner. You have as much claim to grief as anyone. You? I love Jaehaerys, but my concern has been more for you and what you have endured. Hello. Uh, I... I forgive you. What? Yeah, because you was in bed doing some P90X. I said that <laughs> I forgive you. Suits you, Your Grace. Valyrian steel. Worth more than a castle. A sight to stir the passions. Egg on the Conqueror reborn. Just get on with it. <laughs> Once, Different, right? Business. There are rumors that the king readies himself to fly to war. Everybody's already got their shoes on. To you. 
Only that I think it would benefit all of us to prevent our king from being brutally slain by our enemies and his body parts scattered to beasts and his court come to ruin, would you not agree? What exquisite armor? I was given the conqueror's name and his crown, so I shall wear his armor to war. I fly to meet Sir Criston. Small in position before you depart then, Your Grace. So that's Aegon the Conqueror's stuff? That's what they just said. That's crazy. That's crazy they, they still have it. <laughs> there are diverse rumors whispered on the streets of your city. Or that it fits. One such right. is that Your Grace sends his forces to battle, and in his courage and wisdom, flies with them. Another is that His Grace was outwitted by his counselors and persuaded to fly to war with Sir Criston, so the Queen Alicent may reign in his absence, with Prince Aemond at her side. Stirring the pot. I so, know. <clears throat> who spreads these lies? Me. Much little. <laughs> <laughs> Tales take on a life of their own. My weeds, unless they are tended. Gotta cut them out. Tend to them, then. Damn. He just manipulated the dog out of him. Did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Lord Laris, my father always said he had no use for a master of whisperers, and yet... I find myself wanting for one. Hey. Because you're auto, son. I should be glad of your I mean, grandson. You honor me, your grace. You honor me, your grace. Oh, they perfect. always say that. Wow. That was pretty cool, we right? escort you to the dragon pit, your grace? Uh, I think mayhaps I shall fly another day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, it does seem wise mm -hmm. on reflection. Come out with us, my king. So Martin has a new squire that wants bedding in. He's never f a woman. Are you sworn to chastity now? <laughs> <laughs> of course, your grace. <laughs> that was... <laughs> Why are they talking to him like that? First of all. Yes, your grace. There you go. He looks like Pippin. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't. Dragon on the string. Oh, that's probably a popular toy, huh? <laughs> they get they call it the street of silk, right? Mm -hmm. Dang, this is like a festival in the streets, huh? Mm -hmm. Sit yourself down, mate. Yeah, he's the Queen Bee. Main character. Definitely. Not sure how much we're talking. <laughs> Although you know, a wet whistle works wonders. They got yeah, waitresses on the street. One for, the flagon, <laughs> one for yourself, there's a good girl, okay? <laughs> oh, that's a girl. Oh, yeah. No sense of fun, some of them. For you, man of Dawn. Well, some of them been abused, bro. Dornish, are you? Yes, I am. The part of Westeros, my house never settled. Although it said even Dawn mourned the passing of my grandsire, is that so? Who was your grandsire? <laughs> they call him the conciliator. King Jaharis. Yeah, Jaharis. She just said that. Thousand apologies. Please, continue. Look, I, I really shouldn't be telling you this. It could cost me my head. You are saying you're a Targaryen. I'm the son of Balon the Brave. Bastard brother to Prince Daemon. And the late King Viserys. Oh, I was gonna say, yeah, you're Viserys' brother. To the one true queen. Renera Targaryen. What the hell? The blood of the dragon runs through these veins, and yes, men would take my head for it. Stick your hand in the fire. <laughs> A dragon's head Prove must it. watch his own neck when he has no white cloaked guardsman to do it for him. You do not look very much like King Viserys. <laughs> or Prince Daemon. How do you know what they look like? Yeah, he speaks truth right enough. Look, you can tell by his hair. Because <laughs> yeah, I'm their half brother, you yeah, all right, all right. I'll tell you who else doesn't have silver hair. The rightful heir to the Iron Throne, my nephew, Prince Jaceris Valarian. But in fact, so... Do you have a nephew? Oh, the king. All hail the king! All hail the king! <laughs> Drinks for all! At the pleasure of the crown! Yes! The king is king! <laughs> Our king so cool! <laughs> Sit down. Sit yourself down. Sit. Drink the wine. Take the lid. Come on, man. It's nice. You. Oh, they're having like a bachelor's party. I guess so. Yeah. 
Oh, so he's like a common person in there. That's where you met that girl. I know, just the Jesus of you, my boy. Room's taken. Her name is Sylvie. What the heck? <laughs> Awkward. No shot. He walked in on him. Yeah. They all did. Eamon the Fierce. <laughs> you have come so far, and and yet you still lie with your very first. <laughs> what a fine, sweet thing. <laughs> woo! 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 <laughs> He's obnoxious see, this episode. I do not exaggerate. <laughs> Such is the madam's prowess that even now my brother will not sample another <laughs> oh it's Hard deeper than that isn't it though. as you can see she she's now very much occupied <laughs> dang amon's tip is dragging <laughs> dragging down the hallway and he... he's just gonna leave naked like that though Maybe I should do that. I should just curl up naked one day. See how it feels. Maybe it's one of those things you never know you need it. <laughs> Don't you do that every night? <laughs> well, not like that, though. That guy, like, he's about to cry. And no, I don't sleep naked, bro. <laughs> Unless it's real hot. Oh, there it goes. Read it, read it, read it. She's petty for not reading that. Isn't it, like, really important? Rhaenyra. Lost the... Sugway! Help! I will go back and try to read it, but I don't think I'm supposed to. Right. Sugway, our company has come back yonder. On the cold, hard ground, which is why we make for the bull. A tavern with an excellent reputation on the Rosby Road, not two miles away from memory serves. We marched to make the first strike in the name of his grace. I assure you, my nephew will not begrudge me a night of comfort. Why well, he's trying to get a hotel Excuse or something? Your brow, Cole. <laughs> we will rendezvous with your army at first light. The wine is good, perhaps a little after first light. We're exposed. What? Cole? Get to the uh -oh. trees! That'd be so scary. I know he has a good instinct, because I I wouldn't even notice. Nah, you would have noticed. This sounds like Daenerys music. Oh, she can burn him down right here. Yeah, she's about to start a forest fire, ain't she? Get him. Get him. Eat Kristen Cole. Bail up. Bail up. <gasps> get him. Get him. Get him. Bro, this thing's tough. Man, you still could have got him, man. You could have. Dang. But now she's got to go tell him that they're man, coming. I, I'd go lay, I'd go lay my dragon. I'd just start burning stuff. Man. Daenerys burnt down King's Landing. You can take out a couple trees. Nah, that's a lot of trees. She probably just really yeah. cares about the environment. <laughs> Dang, that would have been critical for the war right there. A it's okay, shame, though. Kristen. We must move under the trees and by cover of dark starting tonight. And no ends. Right, you cry, baby. You're so Sleeping naive, Kristen Cole. <laughs> With some half dozen other knights, I'm sure of it. Perhaps a scout party for a greater army. The Ravens confirm it, Your Grace. Lord Farring has reported a larger force moving northeast towards Rosby. Could you be certain it was Cole from such a great height? It was not such a great height, Your Grace. You said not to engage, so I didn't. Exactly. Your Grace, <laughs> we commend the Lady Baylor for her sharp eyes, but we can tarry no longer. The time for action is told her not surely to. now. Your Grace, I must agree, and request your permission to return to Rook's Rest and fortify my lands. I shouldn't fret, Lord Simon. They'll be making for Harrenhal. Tis Prince Damon who ought to worry. Prince Damon has Caraxes. Cole will look to increase his numbers, and he may call upon a dragon of his own. This is why you must act now, Your Grace. Loose the dragon's root coal out and burn him. I mean, that's what I'd be saying, right? <laughs> she says, stay strong, girl. <laughs> Hang in there. No, don't listen to him. Do you? 
I have heard your arguments, and will consider them. Oh, she liked that. You can tell Jaceris is getting a little irritated with it, though. He kind of wants some blood, too. Right, he looks like he's about to be like, nah, we should do something. Right. <laughs> hey, that's your castle now. I could never imagine having a bedroom like that. So yeah, that's crazy. crazy. Those people got burned up, and do you see this place? There's probably black mold growing on the walls. Who's trying to open the door? Exactly. That's someone you don't want to come in then. I'd have got a sword through my face right there. Was it haunted? No shot. I just am getting haunted vibes. Like you think that was the a ghost? music is so scary. Man, that could have been a poltergeist. Who is that? A Targaryen. Always coming and going, aren't you? And I have to clean up our <gasps> baby Rhaenyra. The ghost of Rhaenyra. Oh no! No. Did they did they put something in his food he refused to eat? No, he didn't eat anything. Oh, he's getting haunted up. Oh. Yo, he's at a godwood's tree. Who's that? You will die in this place. That was that lady that was in that room, I think. You will die in this place. I thought he'd say something slick. He couldn't. What do you know of the movements of Alicent Hightower? Would you take her hostage? Kill her outright? I would speak with her myself. Killing her would be easier. If war can be averted, it is my duty to avert it. I have reason to believe she may be of the same opinion. She sent a raven. She has expressed her remorse. You can have a message brought to her, in secret. She would not agree to it. She would suspect some subterfuge. As would I if I received such a message. I must see her. Face to face. How? I know. No one likes you there. She is the Queen Dowager. She goes nowhere without many eyes watching her. Unless it is fraught. Speak it. There are fishing boats plenty in the bay. The city depends on them. Damon made the journey unhindered. But if I'm recognized? You may be surprised to learn it, but most folk pay no mind to a woman who has not dressed as a queen or lured herself with the eyes of men. She can dress like she did early when she went out with so Damon to the brothel. Oh, with the beanie, like a hipster? Right. But she's about to go rock climbing. Bring the bell. Or do I scale the wall and enter her window? There is one place Alicent goes, outside the castle wall, where you may yet find her alone. She goes to pray alone. Oh, yeah. She always has. Yeah. That's Call where her candles. and Rhaenyra met. Yeah. That's been a common theme in this show. Hey, let's go. I'm, I'm with it. One thing about this show, guys, I'm really, really messing with, man, is some of the visuals in this show are really showing out. We're getting a... I just like how we're getting such a visual representation of this world. Right. I like They're, that we get, got to see Heron Hall's actually cursed. Like, we always just heard that. Was it cursed or did that girl do some magic on him or something? I don't know. It seems cursed to me. Maybe she's not even there. Maybe she's a ghost. Oh, wow. I didn't even notice that was her. She was a septa. <laughs> a sign that's... Well, she should have dressed up like a sign that's sister. I would be like, ding, ding, ding. Shame. <laughs> <laughs> if I lived in King's Landing, I would definitely rather be a common folk. Is that guy texting? Did you see that? <laughs> I don't know. What? Ready, I guess. <laughs> they strap. What 
Which god is that? Is that the mother? Probably. I know the mother, the stranger, because they said it a lot in this one, but I don't really know who the else. The smith, the warrior. Yeah, the, yeah, the warrior. What's the other one? <laughs> I must speak with you. If I could cry out, your knights would find me. I would be taken or slain. Then not before I killed you. <laughs> and then what? Oh, I've begun badly. Right. <laughs> we watched the tourney together, you and I. The day my brother was born. You gave Damon your... We knew, even then, whatever. that men trained up for battle are eager to fight, to see blood and glory. But you, I, I... I know you do not have that desire within you. She's like, said who? Rhaenys has counseled me. She said she saw in you a wish to avert the worst of what may now come. So you've come to surrender then? I no. have come to see if we may uncover some path towards peace. Like always, like that's what she's trying to do. Smell battle. But if you and I may come to terms... There are no terms now. You have no army. Your allies turn from you and they hear of your depravity. Your hands are bloody to no crime. I could never have imagined you... The trespass was not mine. Oh, think what you will. I am a mother too and you have yet to answer for the murder of my son. I repudiate that act with all my heart. Of course you do. They're, they're, they're going in circles, ain't they? I know. Inheritance. <laughs> She read the room, didn't she? Yeah. You so low that you will countenance the suffering and death of thousands in order that your feckless son... Your father changed his mind. <laughs> and so your father's proclaimed to the realm. I saw the king that night. Mere hours before I left him, he had affirmed my right to the throne. A right he upheld steadfastly every day of his life after my mother died. And yet you will maintain that his mind was changed in an instant. I will. Wow. You lie. To herself. No. My father loved me, Alicent, and I believe he loved you, too. Did you betray him at the very last? When was your plan first laid? Was your ambition so cute? He changed his mind, Rhaenyra. He changed his mind. They need to go see Steve Wilkos. I swear this to you, <laughs> on the memory of my mother. I've been at times unkind, but never untrue. I pronounced before all gathered in that room that you would make a fine queen. Do you think me capable of such naked deceit? What did he say at the end? Did he speak my name? He was weary. Very. It was hard at times to understand. Sounds familiar. He spoke Ekon's name. He said he was the prince that was promised to unite the realm. Hey. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. I desire peace as you do, but to possess. Did my father use those words? Oh. The prince that was promised. Did he? Yes, he did. Just tell her. That matters. That means a lot. He spoke to you of the Song of Ice and Fire. It's a story he once told <laughs> about Egon the Conqueror. Oh, now you know you're wrong. The, the Conqueror. Not your Egon. Not Egon the party boy. She's over there like... He was good before you <laughs> discovered. There's been Don't mind me. He's got all the tea, didn't she? <laughs> you can prevent this, Alison. Come on, Alison. Do the right thing. A terrible war is looming. And even victory may be so bloody as to be counted a loss. Do not let your pride blind you. There's a bit. No mistake. Damn. Oh, she's too deep in. That lie, she believed it herself. My father's dug gone in like court. I got my Gatsu hook. God is on the march, Eamon. You know what Eamon does? A killer killer. It's too late, Rhaenyra. Alice. She Better tried, Get out man. of town. She tried. She really did. She just put it all on the line right here. Guys, I'm pretty sure every single one of those pieces of the seven back there were all representative of the story unfolding, but I didn't even get a chance to see who they were. Right. No one can say she didn't try. This episode went straight Dune on them. <laughs> Did you hear that music? All right, guys, that was House of the Dragon, babe. What did you think about this episode? I thought it was crazy. I thought crazy. a lot of just craziness happened, honestly. Um, I thought it was insane that Rainier actually, like, infiltrated and got away with it kind of right well so far when I mean, we didn't really see her escape but she infiltrated as a septa and it was pretty nuts that she actually did everything she could to try to prevent anything that's about to happen 
nuts, right? And then the thing that's cool, man, is she infiltrated, and I feel like if I if I walked up and put Allison at knife point like that, I think she'd just start screaming. Mm -hmm. You know, that'd be my luck. But uh, I love all the visual stuff, especially inside of there with like uh the mother and the warrior and all that stuff all the visuals in the back mm -hmm. very cool it's a lot easier to work backwards in these episodes in these episodes right yeah on the back yeah it is basically man we started out and those two houses sorry i forget the names man but i think it was like brackens and blackwoods or something like yeah that. i think you're right it brackens, sounded like that brackens was the one with the the deer with the antlers on it brackens and and it kind of looked baratheon and you said who blackwoods blackwoods or something like that right one of them was team black and one of them was team green they always have had drama because when Rhaenyra was at court trying to find a husband, two of them got into a fight. One of them died. The yellow one. Right. Which I think was Team Green. In the, I don't and know. And they were fighting over land that was basically, was that the Riverlands? Is that what they were saying? I think it was the Burning Mill because that, remember the mill? But what, what land is that in though? Mm. I thought it was on the outskirts of the Riverlands. I yeah, because it's, I think it's under the Tully's. It's beautiful land. Uh, yeah. I can see why they were fighting over it, but that part was brutal. That was one of the more graphic things we've seen in game of any you know not game of thrones but house of the dragons game of thrones and it's basically like the first war between right. the houses in a sense like i understand that it wasn't they had their own fights you know but it just goes to show given the right opportunity and given the right narrative that they could push forward that it's just an opportunity for violence so maybe right. that's just going to be what we're going to get a lot more right. of going forward man that was i think crazy. what it showed was because that, during that same period of the show, they were showing the Eric's, Eric, E. Eric and A. Eric. Right. And I think what it was signifying and by showing that was also that people are going to die for this cause when it has nothing to do with them. Yeah. Facts. So just like innocent people, innocent families, they might have always had the drama. But even in the council, they said, OK, they've always had the drama. But now is the time where they took it out. Yeah. So it was a win for Team Green, apparently, to Aegon. But that's leading Kristen Cole and Aegon to go, I guess, rally up some more Team Greens. Right. And Kristen Cole was right on cue, man, looked up, saw the dragon. They made it. They pretty much v line to the woods. Uh, I don't know why she didn't just burn that forest down, but it turned out it was Rhaenyra's orders. And oh, I yeah, feel yeah. like she should have just burnt it down. She could have ended Kristen Cole right there. I guess they have no idea that he's Hand of the King at this point and all that. Or maybe they do. I don't know. I don't think they know that. Unless there's someone sending, you know, spying in their camp, but right. I don't think so. But basically, man, what's happening is we're gearing up to war. We're sending the kids off. We're getting, we're, we're putting the babies to bed. Yeah. It's about time for war. All the men in this realm are, they're bloodthirsty, man. Yes. And it's just funny because it's been peacetime. So mm -hmm. in a sense, everyone has just been not really, they've just been barking a lot, right? I don't really know how about all that action they are because it's been peace times. They've been essentially like, kind of like in the movie or the show we just watched, Hawkeye, they were LARPing. Yeah. They've been LARPing the whole time. The closest thing they got to combat was essentially when they were jousting, right? Right. Right. So um, crazy in that sense. Damon pulls up to Heron Hall, takes it over. The way that he took it over, the way they decided to portray that was hilarious. And it me. was easy peasy. <laughs> so easy. I think yeah. if I was in this universe, I would probably go try to take over Heron Hall because... But that like, probably goes to say a lot about Heron Hall. Well, because, it's a you know, castle, but it's a castle. But in Game of Thrones, when you when you were offered Heron Hall, it was low-key like to... To shit on you, Loki. Isn't Bronn like, like <laughs> didn't Bronn not want Heron Hall in Game of Thrones or no? Well, I right. Nobody wanted it because it was a curse. Yeah, nobody place. Ever wants Heron yeah. Hall. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's it's just funny to see that that is still like a running thing because all because Aegon the Conqueror burned that guy that guy's family, but he burned him alive in there. Right. So I can see why it would be cursed. Dead people are in there. <laughs> I like Heron Hall, man. I think it has character. I'm a big fan of the rain. It's my favorite weather, so you know, as long as it ain't dripping in the bed, you know, it'd probably be all right. All right. You have fun at Heron Hall. I will be um, in Dorn. Oh, we having fun in Heron Hall. <laughs> We're going to have all kinds. We're going to have a party. Me and Damien going to be hanging out. We're going to have us a, a party. The whole realm's invited. <laughs> um, Yeah, gearing up to war. Basically, Rhaenyra infiltrates the camp, puts Allison at knife point, and begs her, basically begs her for peace. And it's a common theme. Rhaenyra's doing so much to try to prevent bloodshed, right? Mm -hmm. They have a great discussion about essentially what really happened at the end of Viserys' life, what he was really trying to say. And Allison, she's completely in denial, man. Right. But, but like I said, from her perspective, I can understand why she would be. Well, yeah. And I mean, she wants Aegon on the throne because that's her son. And, right. And she, she knew Viserys didn't mean that, but she wants to believe that. Like wholeheartedly, but she wants from what to believe she's, that. Yeah, but from her perspective, she doesn't know what he's talking about. 
Yeah, but she clearly found out in that moment, but she still wants to believe it. Yeah, 100%, man. She's <laughs> definitely lying to herself. But all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is in the moment when Viserys actually passed, I can understand why maybe she was confused, but I don't know, man. Uh, I feel like Rhaenyra should have just told her, but she ushered herself out pretty quickly after she said no and then ran off. Well, so. she ushered herself quickly after he said that because she said, oh, I just want you to tell me anything, just anything on your deathbed that could make Rhaenyra not the heir because she's dying. Right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's I mean, yeah, I have no doubt about that. 100%. Yeah. So all of that's just insane. It's pretty insane that Damon's getting visions of Rhaenyra mending up the the little boy that was murdered because Rhaenyra is telling Damon, like, everything you do, I'm sitting here picking up the pieces, bro. So make a good choice in Hall or whatever. Right. And I wonder why they choose to portray it as like a young Rhaenyra. Maybe because Damon has some type of like inner guilt of like dragging her into all this in a way. Because right. in a way he kind of corrupted her and made her life really complicated right. that night. It yeah. could be. It could be that. And then obviously we have uh, Aemon Targaryen. He likes to cuddle up and get petted on. But you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Hey, but before know? all that, I'm sorry to interrupt that part. Oh, I but, just wanted to get it out of the way. <laughs> oh, but there was that guy that was there named Ulf. U-L-F. Oh, yeah. And he was claiming that he's like a brother to Daemon and Viserys. Right. So and he's not allowed to tell anyone. Right. So that's a weird claim, right? And it's crazy that... They're about to like go to war and stuff because maybe he'll somehow be relevant in the mix. Yeah, he's going to have to get a 23 and me or something because I feel like in this world, people can just <laughs> say whatever they want to. You well, I mean? mean, I mean, but at the same time, Rhaenyra's sons like are not Targaryen. Well, they're not Valerian. So it's one of those things yeah. being a bastard son isn't like in his position, it can be dangerous. Right. So. It's one of those things, if you're sitting there speaking it and proclaiming it and putting your neck out there, then there has to be some type of validity, or at least that's yeah. probably the mentality, right? So, yeah, he'll probably be very relevant, but that was wild to see that. Right, I mean, and, just popped out and it was crazy in Game of Thrones, so, like, Joffrey was obviously a bastard, right? Mm -hmm. But no one said anything because, I mean, he was blonde and all that, and he was born to, like, a brown-headed dad, and everyone knew he was a Lannister, right? Right. But no one really, like, said much, but in this one, I feel like they're quicker to say something. I feel like, like in here. Well, because they've been under Viserys' rule for so long. Yeah. They don't understand the brutality that is to be bestowed upon them for running that trap, basically. Yeah. Joffrey was straight, take your tongue. Yeah. He was probably taking tongues at five. You know what I mean? We, <laughs> yeah. just, we just picked up Game of Thrones where we picked it up. But, um, yeah, he's probably been taking tongues since the toddler. <laughs> <laughs> but um, crazy episode, man. It, it's progressing for sure. Like I said, it just seems like Team Green is just all in on on war basically and Renera is essentially she's all in for war too because she's about it you know she'll protect her kids 100 percent, but she she's trying so desperately to not allow it to come to that and all the men are just so excited to prove themselves in a sense, right like right? even in her even at her little council they were all like we want to do this it's our time now let's go and she and even Aegon got egotistical yeah yeah he well did. her and renice are looking at each other like nah y'all need y'all bros are need to chill we know what we're doing. We got the dragons here. What are y'all talking about? But they're trying to raise up the armies, and I get I get what they're saying though because I mean you got to have some time to strike. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Like there's got to be a little bit of that for sure. But I think what Renice was trying to communicate to Rhaenyra was it's just not time yet. Right. So uh, yeah, 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 for sure. Um, and and that's kind of what Allison was trying to tell Kristen Cole. Why would you go right now? You don't even have anybody. And he's like, oh, I just need a few good, good old boys. And then Aegon's going to pull like, well, bring up. bring dragons. Yeah. I'm like, no, we got to be, we got to be, <laughs> we got to be low key. Yeah, but yeah. he got all egotistical. So, I mean, their motivations are obviously different. The men are out. I mean, I, I'm sure they love their kids. And they want to protect their kids too. Ultimately, that's what it all comes down to. But they want to prove themselves. Like they're ready to right. go. Right. So, yeah. And when you've been in peaceful times for so long, maybe it's just like something you're itching to do or you can even actually now that I just said that you can kind of see that with like Lenor, for example, he was having peaceful times. You know, he had 10 years with the Rhaenyra because I just edited the episode. So I remember he was sitting there saying, hey, like I'm ready to go to war. I'm itching to go to war. Like because when things are so peaceful, maybe that's just a men's bored. nature or something in, right. this, in this world, you know? Well, yeah, definitely for sure. Um. Something I thought was very interesting, though, just a small tidbit was they were speaking of Viserys and were they not speaking of him in the best terms? They were saying he's one of the wisest and gentlest and they were just giving him all these praises. Right. 
Um, was that in this episode or did I make that up? Um, I think they were, but I don't, I don't remember if it was in, in this episode, but I, I could have swore wh- they were who saying, was saying that the small folk. I don't even remember. I don't. I just, it just occurred to me, but I, I made a mental note of it because I remember he asked. He has someone early in this season. Maybe it was Lionel, Otto. He has Lionel Strong. What oh, was it Lionel Strong? What are they going to yeah. remember him as? And I remember at the time thinking weak, naive, blah, blah, blah. And it seems like. Oh, you, you and you remember that? So you saw the full circle moment? Yeah, because I was thinking, you know, his decisions in life ultimately led them to where they are. But it wasn't just him. There was a lot of variables that went into play, like other people. But I'm just glad to know that people aren't like hating on him and talking bad about him. I just like to hear that. They spoke of him as if he was like a like a one of the best kings, one of the wisest kings. And ultimately, under his reign, it was peaceful and, you know, people didn't lose their heads. So, right. If you're thinking you about want. it, um, the reason why I said it was probably a small folk who said that was because if you think about it from their perspective, like this, we little, just don't want to go to war. Right. They don't yeah. want to go to war because they honestly are like they kind of look like they're having a good time. Like they had dragon things like they seem like they're supportive of like the dragon protection, like the they're protection they're getting like yeah. in their town so if a civil war happens they're going to be affected the most well yeah that's kind of like being like elect me our economy is great but we're at war right. <laughs> it's like our economy is great you know and those two things don't always go hand in hand but yeah you just, ultimately man a populist just doesn't want their government to lead them into slaughter you know what i mean right especially over and the, maybe that's why they're so i'm so sorry to interrupt you sure. but maybe that's why they're so comfy with amen and Aegon walking in there like they're, they'll be quick to stand up and like support them, but they party just as hard with them. Well, I think that with Aegon, it's interesting because he wants to be a strong king and he, and he's about his authority. Don't get me wrong. Like you can be his friend all you want. Don't talk out of place. He'll take your tongue out. I, I, I really do believe that, but he's having this inner temptation to just hang out and, and have fun. Like he just wants to have fun. And even like he has these FOMO, people, he has FOMO. Exactly. Yeah, like, he's like, they could just protect me with, you know, all their, all their focus and all their energy and they could dedicate their lives to my service, but that's boring. We could just <laughs> hang out and take a couple shots. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but it's weird because those are his, like he, he obviously br- brought his friends in the King's yard because just the other episode he was drinking with them. Like right. when he, sh- and so obviously like his friends got little promotions in their King's guards now. And when he said, but y'all have a oath of chastity and the guy's like, <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> right. But, um, it's just funny how that's like a dangerous thing, kind of. Yeah. Because maybe like his friends, they, they they were sitting down on the job. So that's a good way to get to Aegon, I guess, by having like your Kingsguard be really weak and sending Kristen Cole away. Well, that type of stuff's not really a problem until it becomes a huge problem. Right. Kind of like Kristen Cole. Kristen Cole's doing some terrible action, doing some just some despicable action. He should not be doing that, Kristen Cole. But, you know... It's not really that big a deal until they decided to break into the castle. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just one of those things, man. I mean, it is Every, a big deal, though, because that's the reason why, like, for histories and centuries, the King's Guard or whatever, they just aren't supposed to do that because they're supposed to be protectors. They're not supposed to have other, like, distractions. Right. So that's why they have to do all these. Which is why Kristen Cole is like the worst character because right, he breaks he's the, every type. He's of the vote. worst to be head of that, you know. Right. And that that might be why in Game of Thrones it's still on because Kristen Cole done screwed it up and they had to they had to take the route where they have to be strict about it again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, because House Hightower is going to go through it. A lot of lessons will be they're going to sing about this for a thousand years. I'll put it that way. These lessons will echo through the halls of eternity. Um, just a crazy episode. It really sucks that we're we only have one because guys, I'm used to having two. Ever right. since we started Game of Thrones, we've had two episodes to react to. So watching one that's an hour feels like it goes by in 30 minutes. So mm-hmm. that kind of sucks, man. It almost feels like a little hollow because normally we have two episodes to dive into and our right. discussions right. you know, are longer and you know, but with this show, I will say with this show. With the other show, man, you can remember, okay, John, what happened with John's storyline? Daenerys, what happened with Daenerys' storyline? Jamie and Cersei, King's Landing, what happened with their storyline? And as long as you can, Arya and the, and Sansa, Littlefinger maybe, Maris also. But as long as you can remember these guys, man, then you can basically know everything that's going on. But with this one, everything's so intertwined that it's harder to, it's right, harder maybe to I, talk about Maybe we should details. think about, maybe it, like, so Masaria, for example, what she just got a spot on Rhaenyra's council, Absolutely. which is great, but 
she obviously is doing it because she really doesn't like the high towers but she's going to be very useful so that the prediction i have with all this is we're going to have to get in to kill the high towers if vernier is trying to do it peacefully through the small folk through masaria you think so that's my prediction you think she'll do it that schemey yeah and also you don't think she needs a great show of strength you don't think she needs like public affirmation you know what i mean like if she just Maybe. the narrative on her is so bad that if she goes in and just gets a common folk to go do her bidding for her and assassinate maybe this. she gets ulf on her side i don't know enough about this man yet. i don't we either but more. i just feel like ulf is important because they wouldn't have said he was a brother to viserys if he wasn't right um so yeah we got that luceris not much came out of him this episode you can just tell luceris, he's, he's dead uh i said just saris did i not <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Jaceris is chilling, man. He's getting irritated with his mom. And Damon's he's just like to be a, found. He's like a guy in these episodes. He's just itching. To, it looks like he's itching again. Right, yeah, some. yeah. His hand's bloody. And, you know, to me, I thought hands down, the best moment of the show was uh, Laris. He weaseled his way into Aegon's chambers, I guess, and convinced him that they needed a master of whispers. So that's the position that obviously Viserys ridded himself of. And I guess it's because whispers are deceptive by nature. Deception is. And during peace times, what do you have to whisper about? Well, you you can make the argue that the argument that peace times are only peace times because, you know, we're all living in peace times, but behind the scenes, underneath the curtain, there's actually a lot going on, keeping it afloat. So, I mean, I can always understand why you would need some masters of whispers. You know, I mean, America, we have a master of whispers. We have like a CIA and stuff like that. So, uh, it's just interesting to see them bring it back. It's like. It's hard, man. It's just hard to be a good king because the boy's trying, but he, he's just a tough king. I don't know what to say about him. But it's just weird how they keep going to the cities and sleeping with brothel workers and stuff. They're just weird. Kids, well, he man. well when Aegon went in there, though, I will give this in his credit. He said, I used to come here when I was a lad. So it seems as if he hasn't been there in quite some time because maybe he's been trying to rebuild his character. I'm not really sure. But I will say that... I am getting the prediction that it's either going to go good for Aegon that he's cool with it with the small folk or it's going to go good for Rhaenyra with Missaria. That's my prediction. And also with Alicent, what did everyone think about her? Because I think in Alicent in this episode, it proved that she's about to dig down deep with what she believes, which is that which of what she doesn't believe, but what she heard about believes. And she's going to like. It's wartime basically now. But if you're Allison, okay, imagine Rhaenyra is like, Allison, listen, this is what happened. Blah, blah, blah. Let me lay it out to you. You know, I'm going to, all of a sudden, I'm the best speaker. You understand. She can't just be like, oh my gosh, Rhaenyra, it's all been a misunderstanding. Like, yeah, but my whole life has been a misunderstanding. had 20 plus years or something like, I don't know how old Aegon was, but how many years did he have to name him heir? Well, my point is, is she's already so dug in. Right. Like, they've already beheaded kids they've infiltrated they've done sent god that's what renee said though you know remember I mean? renee like, basically said this war's gotten so this is gonna go so it's deep. out of hand at this point right we don't even are gonna remember how it got started which is very much like kind of what's happening here me and you have seen all perspectives of it and we don't even know how to agree how it got started yeah i mean was it it could be viserys's fault it could have been damon's fault it could have been otto's fault who knows man the blame it could have been jaharis's fault for having two kids even like maybe jahara should have never allowed the people to make a choice maybe right. he should have just made the choice so that way no one had to even like so that way it could have just been over yeah. yeah like you're giving the people too much room to sit there and try to like build narratives and stuff so just very interesting man interesting episode uh we need them to be longer unfortunately this was a long episode it was like an hour 20 but it went by it might not have been that long but it went by so so fast man and this show's just evolving a lot it's really evolving a lot so Oh, we didn't even get sure. to talk about Reyna, which was cool. Reyna, which is Renice's granddaughter and right. Damon's daughter. Um, the dragonless. Right. She is basically the preserver of like life after all this. Like, So if the doom happens on, on this I world, thought I mentioned that, did I not? Yeah. No, no. We mentioned it mid in the middle. Oh, of the I was episode. quick about it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We did in the episode. But anyways, Reyna, she basically is like carries on everything so she's very important and i feel like her character is gonna be important and i really hope she rides a dragon yeah it's like thank goodness someone doesn't have a dragon right right, right. but when when aemon didn't have a dragon he was able to ride the biggest dragon so 
Maybe she'll get to ride the biggest one or she'll get to hatch one of those. Well, I got a feeling, man, that there's going to be some dragons available soon because some folks might drop out the race. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't know, man. Incredible episode. Really good episode. Just incredible show, man. I really think the politics of this show is just getting better and better and better, especially because we're just at this point now where on some level, both sides don't want conflict, but it just goes to show sometimes it's inevitable. Sometimes it's things are just out of your control. Rhaenyra never asked Damon to do what he did. Right. Damon never asked that guy to do what he did. Damon made a mistake in a sense. He should have took things in his own hand. Maybe they should have never done it in the first place. Right. It's just complicated, man. It's really complicated. And at this point, if war is inevitable, I would like to see Rhaenyra stop running from it. You know what I mean? I really want to see her step up and try to take the bull by the horns or take the dragon by the scales or whatever metaphor you want to throw. And I just want to see her take control of it. I think all she needs is Damon to just say, yo, I got hair and all. But I don't even know if Damon thinks he has hair and all because I think he thinks like the ghosts of Heron Hall's past has Heron Hall. Well, we're watching this show as if her and Damon are just a solid, cohesive unit, but I don't really get that vibe. Like, I in the know. future, they might fracture. I don't know. Right. I don't know. People love Damon, though. Like, people say he's the best character in all of these series. So we're, we're just going to have to see with him, man, because I don't know. But I, I just love Heron Hall. I love the castle. I love the portrayal of it. And yeah, man, I don't know. I don't know. I guess it was all just an illusion when Damon was hearing the door rattle. Is that what we concluded? Yeah. It was all an illusion. Mm-hmm. That girl was but those doing signs, tricks on him. Those signs had to... You think it was the girl? I mean, if I'm sitting there hallucinating, then I turn around, there's some some weird, ominous girl standing there. She whispers some sweet I wish I could pay attention off. to her to see if she gave me, like, wit, like Melisandre vibes. Yeah, she but looked haunted. Did she really? I mean, she seemed haunted to me. Damon looked haunted. He looked scared. So you think those people that were there when he came in, they weren't really there? I didn't go that deep. I don't know. Oh my I ain't God. saying all that. <laughs> <laughs> you think, oh, so you're saying it's an abandoned castle? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, this ain't no. What's that dang movie called that we watched with Jack Nicholson? Oh, The Shining. The Shining. This ain't The Shining. But, but no, maybe I was. Maybe it could be. That's what I'm saying. Like it hey. could could be some scary stuff like that. But anyways, when I when he saw her at the tree, and he saw Renera in there, so. Maybe, and then they said how aged that was, and he didn't eat it because he didn't eat anything because it might have not really been there. And where was the cooks? Too many questions, not enough answers. Thank you guys so much for tuning <laughs> in, man. Uh, we just need more. That we just need more. We we did our best to just. Talk That's why the he end. isn't talking. Okay, sorry. I just feel like I came. I had something. You scared. I feel like that's why he didn't in contact Rhaenyra yet because he's either dead or he's in somewhere. That's like dead and it's confusing him. Damon. How's he supposed to contact her? Send a raven? Yeah, but he can't send a raven because he's either like. That's his first night there, right? Yeah. Well, give him time. He'll, he'll call her. <laughs> she, <laughs> tell her to calm down. She's busy. She's got stuff to do. <laughs> he'll make contact. I don't know. I don't know what's up with that. You guys let us know in the comments. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, we just we need more action, man. We need more action. So we'll see you guys next week. Thank you guys so much again, man. Kind of awkward on the outro, right?